The BlizzCon Diablo Immortals reveal disaster is the biggest marketing blunder in gaming since the Battlefront 2 fiasco, and it was completely avoidable. Greetings, I, the War Al greets you. Branding, marketing, sales, it's all about perception, and our perception is very malleable. For example, this microphone isn't plugged in, and these glasses have no frames. All right, all right, I know, it's cliche. You already saw that TED talk. That's not a real backdrop. Gaming titan Blizzard just showed how out of touch they are at BlizzCon 2018, where the big reveal was an outsourced Chinese mobile game called Diablo Immortals. How the mighty have fallen. But who cares, right? Blizzard's just following market trends. You should try to be more inclusive. Gamers are just unwashed, entitled misogynists living in their mom's basement says even more out-of-touch games journalists, the real failure here is marketing, branding, and presentation. BlizzCon's like Christmas morning for PC gamers. These people spent $200 just to get in the door. People spent $50 just to watch from home. So when your loyal, dedicated, loving fan base responds like this, You did something wrong. First, you gotta know your audience. Look at these people. They're not Gen Z Fortnite players or casual mobile game users. They're millennial PC gamers. What are they expecting at BlizzCon? Well, they want evidence that you're working on a new PC game. So when the headliner is said to be Diablo, the mind goes to a few different places. Diablo 2 Remastered, a new Diablo 3 expansion, or Diablo 4. So when the big reveal of BlizzCon 2018 is a mobile game named Diablo Immortals, the first thought is, this is a fake out. They're gonna plaster a big Diablo 4 logo up there any second now. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's a, it's a- So, we've successfully disappointed an entire crowd of people. How can we make this worse? I know, let's deride them for being disappointed. This poor kid was still in denial. He was like, but, but PC game. I see a lot of mechanics that we've kind of been begging for in Diablo 3 in this. Is there any plans to make this playable on PC or is this strictly mobile forever? Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone. Right? Well, that's a meme now. This was completely avoidable. All they had to do was give those people, those people who took time out of their week, who took money out of their pocket to be there, to give those people something, even if it's just a promise. A mobile game from a game development company that does PC games or console games should not be presented as the headline event. It should be presented as a fun, optional extra. Todd knows how to do this thing right. A separate game from what we would usually normally do. Uh, we had a lot of ideas. We kept coming back to this one that we felt would be perfect on a touch screen and that would be no better anywhere else. It is called Fallout Shelter. And that is Fallout Shelter. <laughs> What's even more exciting is that this game is coming out on the App Store tonight. But we're not done talking about Fallout 4 yet. So back to the, the big one. Uh, There's been a trend the last few years of game development companies throwing up a logo and winning. All they had to do was throw up a D and a 4, and they would have won that crowd back in a second. And you know, when we looked at the iPhone 11 years ago, we had a few ideas for mobile games. Fallout Shelter was one of them. And we did have another one. It is called The Elder Scrolls Blades.
Another thing they goofed up on is the presentation of the game itself. When people hear mobile game, they think low quality, microtransaction riddled trash. Something that you use to pass the time while you're waiting for your oil to get changed. If your game isn't that, you need to break that perception. Remember the glasses. Blizzard didn't even talk about the monetization strategy. All they had to do was come out and say, This game is going to be free, but don't worry, there, there are no paywall timers. You don't need an internet connection. Don't worry, it gets worse. Turns out the development of Diablo Immortals was outsourced to a Chinese company called NetEase, which according to online posters, is notorious for intrusive pay-to-win microtransactions, releasing incredibly similar games over and over, and in true Chinese company fashion, ripping stuff off. The Diablo Immortals gameplay I'm showing is nearly identical to a game by NetEase called Endless of God. Go ahead, look it up. It's shocking. People have noticed irregularities on some of the Blizzard YouTube videos. Every once in a while, videos become unlisted and identical re-uploads take their place. Hundreds of thousands of downvotes have disappeared, and many critical top comments have been removed. This is one where I call fake news. This is explainable by the unlisted videos being used for embedding, and the huge amount of downvotes the result of botting, and then YouTube comes in later and removes all the bots. But that doesn't change how out of touch Blizzard has become in regards to their own audience. This isn't the first time. This has been happening over a number of years. That'd be like me making videos about Blizzard games instead of counter strike. Oh. The reaction and disappointment of Diablo fans is not difficult to understand nor predict. It's shocking that Blizzard didn't see this coming. Even more strange was the slew of gaming news articles and social media posters attacking Blizzard fans for being upset at the Immortals reveal. The bizarre misunderstanding and name-calling of games journalists and many on social media is shockingly short-sighted. It represents a severe lack of intellectual curiosity. I doubt any of them even bothered to ask an actual PC gamer what they thought and why they were disappointed. Here's a hot take. The people that bash on mobile gaming are an offshoot of toxic masculinity. They get off on hating something that they've traditionally associated with a heavy female audience. What? No joke, I blame Donald Trump for the rhetoric of the Blizzard community right now over Diablo Immortals. What did you do? Everybody's always blaming me for everything. <laughs> Now, PC gamers may be miso, super just mobile aphonophobes or whatever you'd like to call us, but I don't know what that's got to do with Diablo. As PC gamers, we're a huge, diverse group of people who have been consistently let down in the past by game developers and game publishers who have exploited beloved franchises and beloved brands and expected us to, to throw money at them for it. Battlefront 2? Metal Gear Survive? The hell was that? Whatever that Command and Conquer mobile game was? The thing is, we've been let down before, we've been abused before, that's the trend, and we're seeing it happen again. With Blizzard! Branding. Blizzard doesn't innovate. They never have. They refine. They create the absolute superlative gaming experience of an existing genre. So much so that everything that comes after it is branded a clone. Diablo clone, WoW clone, Overwatch clone. I've heard these terms so many times. That's their reputation. That's their brand that they have built over 30 years. If this game is a cheapening of the Diablo IP, if this game is a cynical cash grab by Activision executives, then Blizzard has just dramatically hurt their brand. Warren Buffett said, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. I'm worried this was Blizzard's five minutes. Just kidding, this thing's gonna sell a bajillion dollars in China. Screw you, loyal fan base of 30 years. Thank you folks very much for watching. I am the War Owl and I still have no closer. Thank you.